in the winter? They sleep, yep. Do you know what to eat? Hibernate, that means they sleep all winter long. They wake up in the springtime. In a cave in the woods, in his deep, dark lair, through the long, cold winter, sleeps a great brown bear. Cuddled in a heap, with his eyes shut tight, he sleeps through the day, he sleeps through the night. The cold winds howl, and the night sounds growl, but the bear snores on. An itty bitty mouse, pitter patter tiptoe, creep crawls in the cave from the fluff cold snow. Mouse squeaks, too damp, too dank, too dark. So he lights wee twigs with a small hot spark. See, he made a very tiny fire. Do you think the bear's going to wake up when he hears, feels the fire? Let's see. The coals pip pop and the wind doesn't stop. But the bear snores on. Who's coming next? It's the hare. Two glowing eyes sneak peek in the den. Mouse cries, who's there? And a hare hops in. Ho, mouse, says hare. Long time no see. So they pop white corn and they brew black tea. Mouse sips we slurps, hair burps, big burps, but the bear snores on. A badger scuttles by, sniffs snuffs at the air. I smell yummy yums, perhaps we can share? I've brought honey nuts, badger says with a grin. Let's divvy them up, cozy down, and dig in. And with a nibble and a munch, and a chew, chomp, crunch, but the bear snores on. A gopher and a mole tunnel up through the floor. Then a wren and a raven flutter in through the door. Mole mutters, what a night, what a storm, twitters wren. Everyone clutters in the great bear's den. Do you think all that talking will wake up the bear? Let's see. They tweet and they titter, they chat and they chitter, but the bear snores on. In a cave in the woods, a slumbering bear sleeps through the party in his very own lair. Hare stokes the fire, mouse seasons the stew, then a small pepper flake makes the bear a chew. He blows and he sneezes and the whole crowd freezes. Uh-oh, he's awake now. And the bear wakes up. Bear gnarls and snarls. He roars and he rumbles. Bear jumps and he stumps. Bear growls and grumbles. Do you think he's happy? No. You've snuck in my lair and you've all had fun. But me, I was sleeping and I've had none. He whimpers and moans, he wails and he groans, and the bear blubbers on. Mouse squeaks, don't fret, don't fuss. Look, see, we can pop more corn, we can brew more tea. Bear gulps, bear gobbles, he sighs with delight. Then he spins tall tails through the blustery night. When the sun peeks up on a crisp, clear dawn, bear can't sleep, but his friends snore on. So now that bear's awake, he has to go back to sleep. Let's see what happens when he tries to go back to sleep. This is called bear can't sleep. In his home in the forest, while the cold wind blows, Bear snuggles in his quilt from his nose to his toes. Do you guys like to snuggle up when you're getting ready to sleep? While the snowflakes fall and the drifts pile high, Bear tosses and turns, he moans and he sighs. 
he stares at the wall. He's not tired at all, and the bear can't sleep. Pat tiptoe, who's coming in? It's the mouse. Mouse scurries into the lair to check on the fire for his good friend Bear. Oh, Bear, Mouse squeaks, you are up too late. It's winter in the woods and bears hibernate. That means they sleep, right? Mouse frets, dear me, while he brews mint tea and the bear can't sleep. Bear is counting sheep. One, two, three, four. When Badger and Hare tumble in through the door. Ho, Mouse, says Hare. We were just out walking. Bear should be asleep, but we both heard him talking. Bear snuggles down deep in a sad furry heap, but he still can't sleep. Mouse turns down the lamp. Badger builds the fire up. Hare pours warm milk into Bear's tin cup. Then go for a mole tunnel up into the lair. Mole frets and he fusses. It's bedtime for bears. The cold wind blows while the firelight glows, but the bear can't sleep. Wren, Owl, and Raven flitter flutter inside to find Bear awake with his eyes open wide. Wren hops to and fro. What else is there to try? A song to make him sleepy? So they try a lullaby. All gathered in the lair, they hum along for Bear, but he still can't sleep. I'm awake, roars Bear. That's all there is to it. I've tried to fall asleep and I just can't do it. I'm bored, bored, bored. So, I'll spin you a tale. Once upon a time in the Strawberry Vale, the friends huddle in as the story begins, since the bear can't sleep. Bear tells a story he has never told before. But just before the end, there comes a rumbling snore. When the sun peeks up on a bright new dawn, the friends can't sleep, but the bear snores on. Okay, we're going to make a craft today. We're going to make bear in his lair, that's his little cave, with his quilt. And he's sleeping. All right, let's go make a craft. <laughs> so today's favorite friend is going to be Elmer the Patchwork Elephant. Has anyone read any elephant or Elmer stories before? Did we face it? Yeah. yeah? All right. Well, we've got an expert in the audience, but so we've got, what's that? I will get a four. You have? Yeah. Well, you have to tell me what you think of hearing it again, okay? <clears throat> So Elmer the Patchwork Elephant by David McKee. There was once a herd of elephants, elephants young, elephants old, elephants tall and short, fat and thin. All were different, but all were happy, and almost all were the same color. So we can see this whole group of elephants, huh? And they all look pretty similar, don't they? All except Elmer. Elmer was not elephant color. He was patchwork. Elmer was yellow, and orange, and red, and pink, and blue, and green, and black, and white. Has anyone ever seen an elephant like Elmer before? You have? Well, I want to go to the zoo you're going to. It was Elmer who kept the other elephants happy. Their games and jokes were always his idea. If an elephant was laughing, the cause was usually Elmer. See, they're all having fun and dancing and celebrating Elmer here. Looks like they're having a lot of fun, huh? But Elmer himself wasn't happy. Who ever heard of a patchwork elephant, he thought. 
No wonder they laugh at me. One morning, just as the others were waking up, Elmer slipped away. He's running off into the woods. Yeah. As he walked through the jungle, Elmer met other animals. Good morning, Elmer, they said. So what kind of animals can we see here? Do we see, what's that? Does anyone know what that one is? A lion, right. How about that one? Do you know who that is? A zebra, there is a zebra. There's one right over here. Who's this one? The big stripes. Yeah, we've got a tiger. We've got, does anyone know what this one is? A giraffe. Yep, there is. There's a giraffe hiding right over here. And then we've got a hippo. And we've got an alligator sneaking out of the water over here. And then we've got a little turtle next to him, too. And a lion. And a lion, yep. So let's see what they have to say about Elmer. After a long walk, Elmer found what he was looking for a large bush covered with elephant-colored berries. Elmer caught hold of the bush and shook it until the berries fell to the ground. See all these berries coming down out of the ground. Then Elmer laid, and roll, laid down and rolled over on the berries, this way and that. He picked up bunches of berries and rubbed himself all over until he was covered with berry juice. When he had finished, there wasn't a sign of purple or yellow, or orange, or red, or pink, or blue, or green, or black, or white. Elmer looked like any other elephant. See, he's rolling around in all these berries here. He's going to make himself look like all the other elephants. On his way back through the jungle, Elmer passed the other animals. Good morning, elephant, they said. They don't know who they're just saying, hi, elephant. When Elmer rejoined the herd, none of the elephants noticed him. Can we find Elmer in this group? I don't think we can, right? He just blends in too much. As he stood there, Elmer felt that something was wrong. But what? He looked around, same old jungle, same old blue sky, same old rain cloud, same old elephants. See, there's Elmer. The other elephants were standing absolutely still, silent and serious. Elmer had never seen them so serious before. It made him want to laugh. Finally, he could bear it no longer. He lifted his trunk and at the top of his voice, shouted. Can everybody shout boo with me? On the count of three, okay, we're all gonna shout boo. One, two, three, boo! boo. <laughs> Great job. Look, at we shocked all these elephants. Look at how surprised they all are. The other elephants jumped in surprise. Elmer was helpless with laughter. Then the others began to laugh. Too bad Elmer isn't here to share the fun, they said, laughing harder and harder. And then the rain cloud burst. When the rain fell on Elmer, his patchwork started to show again. Oh, Elmer, gasped an old elephant as Elmer was washed back to normal. You've played some good jokes, but this has been the biggest laugh of all. What would we do without you? We must celebrate this day every year, said another. The day of Elmer's best joke. All of us el elephants will decorate ourselves in his honor, said a third, and Elmer will decorate himself elephant color. See how much fun they're all having? And now we can find Elmer again. One day each year, the elephants color themselves yellow or orange or red or pink or purple or blue or green, or black, or white, and have a parade. If you happen to see an elephant in the Elmer's Day Parade who is ordinary elephant color, you'll know it must be Elmer. So where do we think Elmer is on this picture? Do we see him anywhere? 
the one that's gray, that's right, because it's Elmer's day. All right, thank you, everybody. So we've got another one here where we meet Elmer's cousin. Elmer's cousin's name is Wilbur. So let's read Elmer and Wilbur. Oh, this is his cousin. Yeah. Oh, we have cousins in the audience? <laughs> Elmer, the patchwork elephant, was waiting for his cousin, Wilbur, who was coming to visit him. He's late, said Elmer. Perhaps he's lost. Let's go and look for him. So he and the other elephants are going to set off and look for Wilbur. What does Wilbur look like? asked an elephant. Wait and see, chuckled Elmer. But be careful. Wilbur likes to play tricks, especially with his voice. He can make it sound as if it's coming from a different place to where he is. He's a ventriloquist. Is anyone here a ventriloquist? Can you make it sound like other things are talking? No, it's pretty tricky. Suddenly they heard, Elmer, I'm over here. They rushed to where the voice came from. Looking for me? asked a surprised tiger. Sorry, said Elmer. We thought you were my cousin. She looks pretty confused. Help, called the voice. Help, I've fallen in the pond. He has, he has. I can see him, said an elephant. Silly, said Elmer. That's your own reflection. Keep on looking. So see, Wilbur tricked him into thinking that this was Wilbur, but it's just his reflection. All the time they looked, the voice came from different places. It called, Quee, here I am, or Boo, to make them jump. It even came from down a rabbit hole. The rabbits popped up, saying, that's very silly. See all these rabbits coming up? After a lot of searching, an elephant said, we'll never find him, Elmer. Let's give in. Wilbur, called Elmer, we give in. You can come out now. I can't. I'm stuck in a tree. Wilmer's voice came from above. We'll go home without you, said Elmer. I really am stuck up in a tree, said Wilbur. Elmer, said an elephant. Is Wilbur black and white? Yes. Why, said Elmer. Then he really is stuck up in a tree. See, he's looking up there. He must see Wilbur. There's Wilbur. Black and white patchwork. They all looked. There was Wilbur. Wilbur, gasped Elmer. How did you get up there? Never mind how I got up. How do I get down, said Wilbur. See, he's up there with all the birds. That's not where an elephant should be, huh? He should be down on the ground. So let's see how he gets down. I have no idea, said Elmer. But we're hungry, so we're going to go home for tea. At least we know where you are now. See you tomorrow, Wilbur. With that, Elmer started to lead the other elephants away. Oh, Elmer, called Wilbur. Don't leave me. I'm starving. That doesn't seem like a very nice way to greet your cousin, does it? Going to leave him up like that? Ha ha. I was just teasing, laughed, laughed Elmer. If you walk along the branch, it will bend with your weight, and we can help you down. Wilbur walked slowly along the branch. When the elephants could reach, they pulled the branch the rest of the way and helped Wilbur off. See, they're all working together. He's almost down. Thanks, said Wilbur. Now where's that tea you were talking about? Then, laughing and joking together, they raced all the way home. So with Elmer and Wilbur leading the pack. That night, as they lay down to sleep, Elmer said, good night, Wilbur. Good night, Moon. A voice that seemed to come from the moon said, good night, elephants, sweet dreams. Elmer smiled and whispered, Wilbur, how did you get up in that tree? But Wilbur was already asleep. Thank you, everybody. You're a great story, audience. Yeah. So how about we get into some crafts? Would anyone like to make an Elmer or a Wilbur? We've got some cool Elmers we can make. And then we've got a game we can play afterwards, too.
Near the glue sticks? Yep, glue sticks are right here. Oh. And you're going to color, or do you want to do a glue stick? You want to color? You're going to do the glue stick too? Okay. You know how to use that, Grace? Okay. And, and uh, Isla, she wants one too. Okay. Are you going to do the coloring? You're going to color? Or are you going to do the patches? You do the glue stick? Some, some glue on. Okay, now put some patches. I do pink one. You need help, honey? Oh, you couldn't get yours out? Okay. Can I see it real quick? Thank you. Let's do some more glue here. There you go. No, you're doing good, Max. Oops. Wow, look at all Max has got here. And yeah, look at me. Yes, yours is good too. You gotta finish yours, Max. <laughs> Max. <laughs> yeah. Is he being silly today? Yes, he's a silly boy today. Yeah. You have put, to put tell mommy. This day. Yeah, that's Max. So we gotta share those two, so we'll take turns. Yeah. So do you want to grab that one? And I want to grab this one. Put your name on it too, Ida. <laughs> There's yep. two. Wait, one, three, four. Yep, well, we got two bags, but we got four and two. A blue one. A blue one? A blue one? Oh, I wish we had a blue one. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Blue one. Maybe next time we'll get a blue one. Of course. Step back a little more. Well, I want a map. Okay. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> How about Gracie? You take it. Great. Okay. I'll take you to put it in the box. Try to line up right here first, and I'll pass the bags back to everybody. Okay, so does everyone want to form a quick line? I want to be a flat. You want to be I a flat? I want to be a flat. <laughs> well, everyone will get a turn. Can I see that bag? Thank you. So let's step back a little bit because we want to you see if we can throw it in. You can be a back of me now. So are you the line leader? Okay, so let's have you step back right about here. And everybody step back a little bit so that we can try and throw it in. Can I be around here? Well, we'll all get a turn. Okay. 
get a turn in a sec. So let's have you go. You want to see if you can get that? Just take turns now. Good job. All right. Now it's you want to go? Yeah. Good job. Here you go. And then you got to go back to, to the back of the line when, once you've had your throw. Good job. And then you're up. Here you go. You can try to throw it in. We're going for long distance. Good try. Yeah. You can step up a little bit. Good throw. Good job. We've got some pros here. Nice. Nice of you. Good throw. Yeah.